Today we embark upon an adventure, a journey if you will, to determine which gun is better, the M&P Optics Ready Full Size or the SIG P365 X Macro Comp. In this video, I will be going into an autistic level of detail comparing these two guns, but don't worry, there will be timestamps if you wanna to skip to a particular portion that you care about the most, like the trigger, the grip, etc. For me, I'm ultimately trying to figure out if this SIG is going to replace my M&P as my EDC. Man, that's a lot of acronyms. <laughs> I'll be grading based on a wide array of criteria. In addition to nerding out on the guns themselves, I'll also be going over the shooting performance and total cost of ownership for an EDC system. Holster, optics, mags, lights, any needed upgrades, etc. Will we answer the question of which gun is right for me and possibly you? Will this election be rigged as well? Well, I don't have all the answers, but I'll do my best. But before I do, this video will probably get demonetized even though I'm not breaking any laws. So if you want to help support the work we're doing here and save money on cool stuff, you might want to go to the name of my channel with a dot something at the end of it. That's right, I've been reduced to speaking in code due to the looming big tech censorship. God help us all. Speaking of God, I also take prayer requests on this channel. So if you have any of those, put those in the comment section below. I would ask that you guys pray for everyone that is in the effective areas of the hurricane that just happened recently. If you're watching this far in the future, hopefully that's something that doesn't happen as often. But currently, a lot of people are suffering. FEMA is blocking aid from private citizens. The government is doing nothing to help. And it's just up to all the private citizens banding together all the churches getting out there and getting aid. So if you're looking for some organizations to help support, I'd recommend you do your own research. I'm not endorsing any particular one, but do your own research. Find one that is doing good work and help them out so that they can help out those people that are still stuck in horrible situations. Because once again, it's up to you. The government is not here to help. The last thing I'm gonna preface before we get onto the comparison is that yes, I am aware that this is a full-size model of the M&P. Yes, I understand that there's a compact. The reason I'm comparing this one to the SIG is because they both hold 17 rounds, so it's fair game. But if it makes you feel better, you can imagine this being a compact. All the same pros and cons are going to apply. Now, with no further ado, let's get on to the actual video. Versus mode. This is where we put the guns muzzle to muzzle or head to head to determine which one wins in each portion of the gun. First, we're gonna start with magazines. Both of these guns have 17 round magazines, which is pretty crazy considering how much smaller the SIG is. But as you can see here, there's a different way that both companies decide to show how many rounds you have. For the SIG, it's similar to the Glock where the numbers and holes are in the back. On the M&P, you have odd and even numbers on either side. So depending on what side you're looking at, you may or may not know you have 17 rounds. That's kind of weird, but also, as you can see, differences wise for these two magazines. The M&P mag is taller than the SIG mag and uh, a little bit wider than the SIG. Not only wider for the body of the magazine, but also wider in the base plate as well. And you'll also notice that there's a lot more sticking out for the M&P than there is for the SIG this way right here right here. So for mags, I'm going to have to give the magazine point to the SIG. Now let's take a look at the grips. Now these grips are going to be graded on a couple of pieces of criteria. The first one we're going to look at though is going to be the texture. So I will say if you are looking for a super, super grippy, never going to fall out of your hands while you're shooting, never going to leave your side, never going to give you up, never going to say goodbye, it's going to be the M&P because it is straight up skateboard tape. It is super duper grippy and aggressive. And that is a pro if it's outside the waistband and if you're shooting it. The SIG still is very grippy, but it is not as aggressive. Point for grippiness is gonna to go to Smith & Wesson. Next is going to be the carryability of these grips. So as you know, everything has a trade-off. All that grippiness leads to destroying your clothing and your skin which means that this is going to be better for carrying. So I'm going to give the carryability of the grip to the SIG simply because it's aggressive enough where I can still hold on to it, but it's not so aggressive that it's tearing the crap out of my clothing and my skin. 
or interchangeable back straps. Both have that option. I will say I've heard reports of the SIG being a little wobbly or not being super tight on here and having a little bit of shifting or rattling. I haven't found that to be the case on mine yet, but I have a newer production version. And one thing to note on these back straps, they just make it bigger this way. They don't give you additional palm swell like this does on the M&P, which is one thing I really like. It really fills in your hand and it feels like it's, it's designed to go into all the nooks and crannies of your palm and your hand, which is really nice. This one is a thinner grip, so this is more like I feel like I can really wrap my entire hand around it really easy. So both have their pros and cons depending on what you're looking for. But for me, I'm going to have to say the ability to have not only the bigger grips this way, but also width wise is really nice. And I would have to give the edge to the M&P. Finger real estate. What I mean by finger real estate is answering the question of, can I get all three of these fingers on the grip without having them hang off at all, without having them partially on, without having to do the British pinky out thing. <laughs> so this one, obviously the answer is yes. I have a little bit of room to spare right here. I have a little bit of hand meat hanging off, but that's okay. And that is how you would assume a full size handgun would fit someone with size large hands. Deceptively though, the SIG has the same ability to give me the same amount of real estate and I'll show you and then I'll explain why. So as you can see here, I still have that little bit of extra right here of material, same amount of meat hanging off and I can still have a full size grip with this gun, even though seemingly the grip is much shorter than the M&P grip. Now, why is that? Well, if we turn our attention to these trigger guards here, you might have a clue as to why. This trigger guard is much shorter and much smaller than this trigger guard. When this trigger guard is larger, it takes up more space right here for your fingers. And that's why the SIG can have the same finger real estate as the M&P while being overall a smaller package. Point goes to SIG. Magazine release. Both are good. Uh, it's a tie. Triggers. Both of these triggers are weird. I'll talk about why right now. First, we have the MNP trigger. This has the little dingus here for a little added safety. And you've got your take up. So there's your take up to the wall. The wall is clearly defined. I'm not accidentally going to go through that wall. And then you have a nice, clean, crisp break that's pretty light as well. Like so. Again, take up, wall break. Very nice. What's weird about this trigger is the reset. So I'll go ahead and reset it, bringing it forward, bringing it forward, spring. And this actually is in the wall. I have to come back to the wall. Here I go. Whoop to there. It's a very springy reset. It pops your finger forward and then you have to come back to that wall. Now, again, because the wall is easily found, it's not a big deal, but it is something that annoys some people, including myself when I first got the gun. I'm pretty used to it now, but it is something that you're going to have to train with to get good at getting back to that wall and shooting that next shot. Now let's take a look at the SIG. The SIG has a very interesting trigger that I don't like very much. <laughs> Initially, I was like, oh, cool. It's got that 90 degree break. Cool. You know, bring it right to that wall. But this actually isn't the wall. So here's your take up to here. And it's got a 90 degree angle for breaking off that shot, which is cool but there's so much creep that it's really hard to find that wall. So you'd think, boom, right there is my wall, but actually you have to creep. So let's creep together. Creep, 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 creep. I think right about there is the wall and break. Now I did that one take, but sometimes when I go to find that wall, I actually go past it uh, like that. So. This is not great, especially for an $800 gun. You'd think the trigger would have a nice, clearly defined where the take up is, like where it stops is the wall and then you pull through it. If you're shooting faster, you can pretty much just call this the wall and pull through. But if you're trying to take a really precise shot and you want to get right to where the wall is, you got to creep, 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 creep under that tension and then get that wall, which again, I went past the wall on accident that time as well. So not great, but let's look at the reset. All right, so there's 
creep, creep, creep. And then I think that's the wall. Yep, I got it that time. We'll go ahead and reset it. And forward, forward, stops right at where the creep starts. And then I go to creep and pull. So this one goes right to where the tension is in the trigger when it resets. It's not a springy reset like the other one, but with that creep, I don't think it really matters. I think I'm gonna to have to give the edge to the M&P trigger. Now these two guns illustrate different schools of thought when it comes to the slide catch. The SIG is a more minimalist approach, very minimal texture, only on one side, smaller, and the M&P has the really big shelf, uh, lots of texture, and is ambidextrous. So I'll show you kind of some of the pros and cons that I found with that setup right now. Big thing for me is while this is very easy to actuate, the issue that I have with it is while shooting, this rubs right here and does not feel great. So for me, I'd much prefer a more minimalist setup for my slide catch slide release. As long as I can get my thumb on that and actuate that slide, that's all I care about. I don't need all this extra. I'm not a competition shooter and uh, it's not as important for me to have the ambidextrous uh, stuff because I am right-handed and I can shoot a right-handed gun left-handed if I need to as well. For the SIG, you can see there is a much smaller shelf here. Still something you can get your thumb on because you have that little bit of texture. Now I will say for this one, with the M&P over there, I was able to close this on a unloaded magazine. This one, I really have to push as hard as I can and even have to get my other thumb in there. And then I can close it on an unloaded magazine. How important is that? In reality, in a real life situation, probably not important at all. But it is something to note if you care about that. I know that's something other reviewers have talked about, so I want to make note of it here. But I don't think that's going to be something that matters. What's going to matter is how it opens and closes on a loaded magazine. And for that, very easy. Minimal effort, and I can reach it with my thumb, so we're good there. Just keep in mind that this is not ambidextrous, and it's not reversible. For me, I'm going to give the point to SIG simply because I don't need the other things that the M&P can do and this doesn't get in the way of my shooting style or the size of my hands. For the rail, you can see that they're very similar. They're both 1913 style. Finally, SIG did away with their proprietary stuff and gave us what we wanted, an easy way to attach a lot of different lights to their guns. So thank you for that, SIG. But as you can see, I've lined up where these individual cutouts are for your attachment points. There's one thing that you should note, while you do have the same amount of cuts, so you would think seemingly you could put the same size lights on either one and have them stick out the same distance. There are two differences between the SIG and the M&P. The M&P has more material from that first cut to the trigger guard, so you can get a light further back on this particular frame. And if you're worried about having a light stick further out than the gun itself or the slide or the muzzle, etc., there is more slide that sticks past this frame on the M&P than on the SIG, like so. So for this, depending on the light that you want to have on here, I guess you could give the wind to either. They're very similar, but I would say if you want to be able to put a much bigger light on a gun and have it be more flush fitting, it's going to be the M&P. Moving on to the slide, we're going to start with the sights, and I'm going to start with this gun because it has the biggest sights. <laughs> front sight, no complaints there. Uh, works well as a front sight. Rear sight uh, is where I have some issues, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. This normally is three white dots for these three dots here, but I colored them in with a Sharpie because I didn't want to have my window too busy when running an optic. The suppressor height or optic height sights are kind of more of a novelty at this point than they are a necessity, simply because there's so many optics coming out that will co-witness or give you at least a lower one-third co-witness with factory height sights. At the time, they didn't really have those optics, so this was a big thing to be able to have this included in an optics-ready model. It was like, finally, an optics-ready model that is optics-ready with optics height sights. Now it's not so much something that I need or want and specifically want because this rear sight is super sharp on the sides here, and for a Penix carry, that's a problem. I actually had an instance where I fell off of something, this dug into my abdomen and actually cut the skin and I have a permanent scar now from where this dug into my body. So I'd much rather have these be rounded and I'd much rather have sights be lower if possible 
for carry in situations like that. For the SIG, we have standard height night sights. As you can see, very bright, vibrant front sight. You have night sights on the rear as well, and there is your sight picture. Now, you'll notice that the rear sight is nice and rounded. It's not in the way. It's not going to gouge you. And then the front is very big and vibrant, very easy to pick up and focus on versus the rear sight. So if I was going to have a night sight set up, I would be okay with this. I don't really care about the night sight feature. I think it's one of those overhyped things. If you have a silhouette of your light and your sights, that works well as well. I don't really see the need for the night sights, but if you care about that, it does come included. I personally would rather just pay $100 less for this gun and have them be white dot sights and then black them out like I did on the other gun. But either way, that is what you get. And I'm going to say for my purposes in wanting to carry this, I much prefer these sights being out of the way and rounded. And with all of the options out there for optics that would co-witness with this height sight, I'm going to have to give the edge for me personally how I would carry to the SIG. For optic mounting options, MNP went one direction and SIG went another. SIG said, hey, this is your footprint, deal with it, make it work. MNP, on the other hand, decided to say, hey, you know what? If you want to run any optic that you want, that's great. The world is your burrito and we'll provide a bunch of different adapter plates. It's going to be great. Trust me, guys. The problem with this system and this system, I would say, is like a boss system or an MOS system. If you're a Glock person, you know what that is. You have a bunch of holes in the slide for different thread patterns and different uh, screws and hardware. And then you have your optic and whatever that optic is, it doesn't matter because you get all these adapter plates that will sandwich in between the optic and the slide. That little plate will be in between and it'll allow you to perfectly mount whatever optic you want on your slide. That is what is supposed to happen with the M&P Optics Ready series. Unfortunately, the plates that come with this gun are made of plastic. And any logical person could tell you that tolerance stacking issues and flex in plastic is not going to be the ideal material for that plate in between your metal slide and your metal optic. But hey, I'm controversial for saying that. I found that the plates were pretty much garbage that came with the gun and I had to go to CNH Precision and get a metal plate to solve my issues with losing zero. Now, if you wanna help support the channel, they are an affiliate. So if you wanna to go to my link in the description, your favorite libertarian. you can click on the CNH Precision link, buy that optic plate for whatever optic that you want, and then this gun will work really well with that optic. Just something to note though that from the factory, you are gonna to have to spend at least $50 more to get a good plate to mount your optic if you go with this gun. And probably with Bidenomics, it's gonna be more than $50. SIG opted to go the route of one footprint, and that one footprint is the RMSC footprint, which is a very popular footprint for carry optics. A lot of companies are developing their optics for that footprint, which is great. It not only means you have a lot of options, but it also means that you can direct mount whatever those options are. And most likely be able to co-witness with your factory height sights, give you a nice low profile option with a lot of sighting systems available to you at no additional cost to mount it. Well, I think you know what I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go with SIG on this one. As far as the slides are concerned, let's talk about the M&P first because I really like these scales. They look cool, they work really well, and I don't really have any complaints as far as the look and feel of the slide. I'm not a fan of the weight. However, it's a very heavy slide. And the other thing I'm not a fan of is this hole. This hole is supposed to be for being able to see if there's a round in the chamber, which yeah, it does that I guess. If that's how you look for it, I will just do a press check. So I don't really need that hole. The thing I don't like about the hole though is that it shoots a lot of and directs a lot of carbon and gas all over your optic. So after like 50 rounds, you have to clean your optic, which is not great. And I don't understand why with an optics ready model, they would still have this. Now I do believe after seeing footage and videos of the new comp models of these guns that they've removed the hole on the slide itself, but they still have the hole on the chamber for the barrel. SIG is not winning any beauty contests with these cocking serrations, but they are functional. I will say they're a little sharp. 
and doing your press checks, but they work well, and I don't really have any complaints otherwise. The real star of the show, aesthetic-wise, is going to be the comp, but we'll get to that later. First, let's talk about this area here. No weird hole like the M&P has, so that's good. Hopefully it won't put a bunch of stuff in our optic, but we still have this hole to check to see if it's loaded. I don't know who's checking to see if things are loaded this way. I don't know if companies have to do this for some type of weird legal or state requirement for safety, but I'm hoping they get the memo soon that everyone knows how to press check now and they don't need uh, to put that there. Now let's talk about the comp. The comp is pretty cool. It looks cool uh, for one, which you know is the most important thing, but it actually is functional. 3.1 inch barrel versus the 4.25 inch barrel. So downsides for barrel are gonna be less velocity, but you are gonna have a lighter package and you're gonna have a package that is comped. So you're going to have similar recoil response with a smaller, lighter package. And that is due in part to the shorter barrel and due in part to the comp. Now the comp actually does work as you'll see in the shooting footage and it is integral to the slide, which means you have the benefit of being able to take this down just like a normal gun without having to remove a thread locker or little retaining pins or anything weird or proprietary that would go with a comp at the end of the barrel. You also don't have to have a threaded barrel for this all to work. So that's pretty cool. So for me, I'm gonna have to give uh, functionality points to the SIG slide, style points to the M&P slide. But how do these shoot? Hmm, good question. Let's find out. First, let me show you a dramatic slow motion shot so you can see how much each of these muzzles are climbing as I'm shooting one-handed. You can use that line of the foam board or whatever it is at the range to gauge how high it's going up every time I'm shooting either handgun. You can see that comp is barking every once in a while with some flamage <laughs> on the left. And you can see that the muzzle is climbing a little bit higher on the M&P. I think that's partly due to the slide being a little bit taller and heavier and having a higher bore axis because of how big and how low down the grip goes from the slide on the M&P. And of course the SIG has all the opposite going for it and it has that comp. And this time I'm gonna use barely any grip with my right hand and I'm gonna do one handed just to see how much recoil is without any interference from me. I'm just holding it with my middle finger and that's pretty much it. It's resting in my hand with both of these guns, but I am putting as little pressure on these handguns as possible to show you just what the gun is doing without any intervention from me. And even this way, you can see the SIG's doing better. Zero misses. I did it! Nice. I can shoot fast with this gun. Nice. All right! <laughs> if I were you and I was thinking about purchasing either one of these guns to carry around, I'd want to know how it carries, how much it prints, and I'd like to know what kind of options I have for carrying these around. Did that make sense? I think so. Let's just go to the footage. First up, we have the m and I've got a Tentacore Abdo holding a spare mag. I have the, oh, what is it? It's the Bravo Concealment Torsion 3.0 holster holding the m and I'm using an Agonic EDB belt. And this is the shirt I'm wearing. It's a size large shirt. I am 6'3", 190 pounds, size large shirt for reference. And we'll try some draws. Pretty familiar with this draw and this holster and this gun. I've done a lot more draws with this setup than the other one, but we'll see how everything goes. I can tell you right now as I'm drawing, it does not feel good on my skin if I am getting any of that grip on my bare skin and my shirt doesn't like that grip very much either. Here's one with light activation. There we go, everyone's blind. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and that is the m and now the downside to this setup is that while just the holster itself is pretty easy to put on and take off, it doesn't leave much space for any additional mag caddies. So what I found 
To work well, not the best though, is this Abdo from Tenacore. The problem with this Tenacore Mag Caddy is that it's got a really strong metal clip with this hook on the other side of it. And what happens is when I'm trying to put it on and put it over the Tegris behind this belt, it kind of just wants to not give that much at all. And I find myself having to scrape across that Tegris to get it to the other side. And then that hook on the bottom of the clip doesn't want to clear it until you really, really force it. So now altogether I have for, I think $80, because this is about $40. The holster is about $40. I have an $80 setup that is reminiscent of a sidecar holster, but the fact that this is super hard to take off and put on kind of makes me usually just run the holster itself with one mag in the gun. Now let's check out the SIG, see how it prints. This is an Alpha Omega Kydex holster. I've got a spare mag here. I have the TLR7 HLX and my Hollow Sun EPS Carry. Same clothes, I still weigh the same. As you can see, it doesn't really print uh, if at all, you might see the actual belt itself sticking out a little bit, but otherwise that claw is doing a good job of keeping it really close to my body. Get a couple draws in, see how that feels. So far so good. Uh, I don't really feel it on my skin as much, but you can still feel it. It still has some texture, but it's not as aggressive as the M&P. Now one more with light activation so we can blind everyone. Yay, we did it. <laughs> all right, I think that's about it for all the drawing and trying it on. Let me tell you a little bit about the holster setup now. Now for the SIG, we are using the Alpha Omega Kydex holster. It's a sidecar style holster as opposed to the other option that you saw with the M&P. So it's got the uh, bendy material, the bungee there. It's got the two clips and it has a claw here, uh, you know, to suck it into your body so you don't print that much. So this is pretty easy to put on uh, conversely to the other option with both of those uh, different pieces. It's all one piece. So you just have one clip on this side over the Tegris. You have one clip on this side over the Tegris. Make sure you clear this little claw here when you're pushing down and it's on. So that's pretty easy, pretty simple to take it off. Same thing, just in reverse. And you can pull off the whole thing. You can pull this out of a small safe, put it in your pants really easily for EDC. Then when you're done with it for the day, you can pull it back out. And this is also more convenient in my personal opinion when you're like at a urinal or something like that, not having to have two individual pieces that you're juggling in front of a urinal draws a lot less attention to yourself. <laughs> now the trade-off for this is going to be the price. This is around $150, depending on what options you get on their website versus the $80 option where you're combining two individual pieces for the mag and the gun. All right, so let's talk about the overall EDC cost of this whole setup, total cost of ownership here. We're gonna start with the gun because that is how you determine how much money you have left for the other things. <laughs> so this gun, I wanna say it was 550 to 600 bucks, but for the sake of the nice round numbers and what you could usually get it for, we'll say $600. Add another $50 onto that for the metal plate that you'll need because the plastic plates are garbage. And then let's talk about what comes with it. So you get a bunch of back straps, you get all the plates that are useless because they're made of plastic. And then you also get uh, two mags. So these two mags are $80 in value because they are $40 a piece if you wanna buy more of them. Then you have, uh, I guess we'll go to the light next because that's what the holster is based around. So the TLR1HL, that is usually around $160. You can usually find it cheaper here and there, but $160, I looked up everything just recently on one website so I could get a good comparison between prices of different things. So on this one particular website, it was $160. And then what's normally over here is the Holosun 507CX2. That is around 320 on that same website. You can sometimes find it for 300, but we'll say 320 for uh, our math today. And then for the holster stuff, $40 for this Brow Queen holster and $40 for this Abdo from Tenacore size D. So $80 worth of holster stuff. And then we'll calculate all this beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 to get the total cost for the EDC loadout cost.
Now let's talk about total cost of ownership for this EDC setup. First, we'll talk about the gun, $800. It was actually $799.99, the price I found. That's actually a good price for this. Uh, normally they're anywhere from 900 to 850 typically. So $800 for the gun. Then you got two mags with that and back straps and pretty much all the other stuff you would get. Um, you don't get any special plates. You just get the plate that covers this, um, but there's no other plates that are included but you can direct mount so you don't need a plate with this particular optic setup. Either way, these two mags came with it and these mags, if you want more of them, are actually $60 a piece. So not inexpensive mags. So that's something to consider. Then let's talk about uh, the other stuff on the gun. So we have the TLR7HLX. This is around $180 on that same website that I looked everything else up on. And then the EPS carry on that same website is going for four hundred dollars so that's all of this right here and then of course this holster setup is around 150 dollars so i'll tabulate all of the pricing for your total edc cost of bing, that much final thoughts before i get to that i want to give you guys two free resources one is going to be handgun hero that is what i use for the grip length comparison that you saw in the video they have a ton of different guns to choose from. You can compare whatever handguns you want and you can see it from really any angle and it's all true to size. So if you want to check that out, you can. It's not a paid placement or anything like that. They don't know I'm doing it. I just use it personally as a resource when I'm looking at maybe switching out an EDC gun for something else. I want to see the size comparison of what I have to what I possibly might want. And that's exactly what I did before picking up the Sig X Macro Comp. If you want to check it out, you can. Handgun Hero, I can't say the website, but you can probably find it pretty easily on the internets. The second free resource is going to be Alpha Omega Kydex's discount code that I got for you guys. It's code YOURFAVE at checkout. That's your fave for 15% off on this holster or any of the other holsters. This was actually custom made before it became a line item on the site by me sending my brand new TLR 7 HLX that I got from Streamlight. So I guess disclosures, I got the light free from Streamlight. I got the holster free from Eric at Alpha Omega Kydex. So big shout out to him for one, giving you guys another option for that light gun combo, but also just having a ton of great holsters, a ton of options as far as colorways and different holster styles. If you guys want to save 15%, you can use code YOURFAVE on his website. And now for final thoughts, or I guess initial impressions, I don't know. I, I keep relabeling it every time I do this. The first thing I want to talk about that I didn't really touch on in the video is reliability. Now this gun is extremely reliable. You've probably seen a ton of ridiculous torture chests where it's frozen, submerged in mud, submerged in water, it's run over, uh, there's a flamethrower that, uh, that was taken to it and it just keeps working, which is insanity. This also has a proven track record with law enforcement, which uh, sometimes can just be contracts and good pricing, uh, but in some cases there is a lot of weight to that. So this I'm not worried about as far as reliability goes. And if I was going to have a end times handgun, it would probably be this over this one. And I say that because with SIG, they're kind of notorious for, and not in a good way, for coming out with a brand new gun. And then within that first year, there's all sorts of bugs and issues that are found by the beta testers, AKA you and me, the people who buy the guns. And then they come out with an inline change. They don't really talk about it, but like a year later, all of a sudden, all of the issues that were in the gun are magically fixed. And if you buy a brand new one like a year later, you don't have any of the same issues that someone who bought the brand new one right when it came out has. And as a YouTuber or a you know gun reviewer or whatever, you would think I would want to jump on whatever the new release is and get it right away. But with SIG, I know better than to do that. So I actually waited over a year to buy this after it initially came out because I'm actually a real person and I use the stuff that I buy. So I wanted to make sure that there weren't gonna be any issues. I know I already talked about the triggers, but I need to talk about them again as far as how easy it is to change them out if you're not happy with what comes out of the box. It is a lot easier to switch out this trigger if you want like an Apex trigger. They make an amazing trigger for the M&P series if you wanna check those guys out. Not a paid sponsorship, not an ad, but this one, wow, it needs some work. 
And there are a couple companies that make a trigger kit for this. And I say kit because there's a lot of parts that you need to change out. And that's kind of one of the other cons. This has the firing control unit. It is its own thing. And that's the serialized part. So you can switch out everything up here. You can switch out everything down here and not have to deal with any weird unconstitutional paperwork if you have a handgun registry because the serialized part is that firing control unit. That's the plus side. The downside is it's very complex in here because I think SIG thought that they did an amazing job with the trigger for some reason and you'd never need to change that out. So there's two kits that I know of. One of which I'm thinking of is Tactical Trigger. I think their kit is $100. And I've seen the videos on how to take the factory stuff off, put the new parts in, and it looks like a pretty long and complex process. So that is a downside. If you are thinking, hey, I know as soon as I get one of these guns, I'm a trigger snob, I'm going to switch it out for a better trigger. This one's going to be a lot easier to do it with than this one. Downside to this one, not having that firing control unit technology is that if you want to switch out the grip, uh, the lower, you're either going to need to get it stippled professionally or maybe do it yourself, or you're going to need to buy another serialized lower because the lower is the serialized part for this one. Let's revisit the comp discussion and also the shooting performance. Now, this one is comped integral to the slide. The barrel is shorter than the comp, so it's kind of like if you had a full-length barrel, it was threaded, and you threaded on the comp. That's essentially what this is without all the messy takedown. This shot flatter on the range, and I felt like I could get a better grip on it because of this smaller grip. I basically had all of my grip strength in this hand, and I kind of just rested this one here, and then I used it to like push out my elbows, I guess, to make sure my dot was centered left and right. But really most of the work was being done by my hand, so I didn't have to adjust my grip as much as I did when I shoot the m and I think another reason the m and just shoots differently for me is that the slide is a little bit taller and the bore axis is a little bit higher it seems because of the grip being so much smaller and shorter on this one than this one there's a lot more uh, that's keeping me from getting my hands super high up and it also is just a lot more reciprocating mass with this big heavy slide so I felt like and you can probably tell in the footage that this just shot better for me with the exception of that trigger which we already talked about Let's talk about the comps though. If you were purchasing a brand new m and out of all the options that are on the market now for M the m and line, I might want to look at, or I might have you look at the comped versions. There are comped ones. The difference between this one that's comped and the comped versions for the m and is that it is a full length barrel. So the barrel is going all the way to the end of the slide. The compensation is still happening integral to the slide but the barrel is ported so you have porting for the barrel and you also have the comp that is going to probably give you slightly more velocity you still have holes in that part of the barrel but the barrel is full length so you're probably going to get more velocity out of this setup than you would this one because this is a 3.1 inch barrel this is 4.25 inch barrel and they have also solved the problem of that stupid hole so instead of having the gas is direct at your optic. They're directing away from your optic with the new comps, and that has been confirmed by Smith & Wesson. So whether that's marketing hype or not, I don't know because I haven't shot it, but they've presumably fixed that problem. So if you love everything else about the M&P, all the stuff I showed you in the video, you're like, oh yeah, none of those cons are cons for me. I, I want to tear the crap out of my hands, and I love a really aggressive grip texture then this is probably going to be the move for you. But keep in mind that if you do get the comp and you're looking at pricing right now, the comp version of this is probably going to be the same price or more than the SIG. So you're not really winning on price anymore. But if you love everything about the M&P and the M&P line and you want a comp version, that is something that exists now. Since you stayed to the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I picked out of these two. Oh, which one's it going to be? Uh, this one's going to be the SIG. You probably guessed it. This just does everything that the other gun does for smaller and lighter. The only things I wish I could change about it would be the price. That would be a big one. That would be nice to change if I could. And also the trigger. And I think I am probably going to go the route of tweaking this trigger so I can have the best of all the worlds, have everything small, compact, thin, easy to carry, but still have the shooting performance of a full-size gun 
and have that better trigger. That is going to up the cost to like a $900 gun plus all the accessories. So we'd be going from, let's see, what was it? Uh, $1,530 to $1,630. But I think it would be worth it for me because I could carry this gun year round and uh, I can do more testing for you guys so we can get some long-term reviews and get more carrying under our belt. And I think it's going to be the move for right now barring any amazing breakthroughs in firearms technology that come out later, which I might jump on, this is what I'm going to be rocking for the near to possibly distant future. Don't get me wrong though, I still like the M&P, that's not going anywhere. If you found this video helpful, I really appreciate the like. I tried to go into as much detail as I could with these two guns so you'd have the ammunition you need to make an educated decision. So if you like that, like the video, please. If you have not yet subscribed, please join the Freedom Family. We'd love to have you. And if you have any of those prayer requests, put those in the comment section below. Also, let me know what your pick is between these two guns in the comment section. Also, if you want to pick up anything you've seen in this video or any of my other videos at a discount, check out the link in the description or the pinned comment. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay free. And God bless. All right, so we're shooting my dad's PZ. Oh, C now you got me doing it. I know it's. All right, so we're shooting my dad's CZP10C, and I'm also shooting my X Macro, uh, newly acquired. We're gonna see if, uh, as they say on the internet, that this mag will work in this gun. So this is the Sig mag in the CZ. Clicks into place, stays in there. It cycled. All right, no last round uh, lockback, but you can run the Sigmag in the CZ.